I'm having a, a pretty hard time getting this going. As you can see by the fact that we're 10 minutes late, I did start a couple of minutes early and uh, feel like I reprogrammed my whole computer and certainly my Facebook page. I got to looking at our class outline and I, of course, skipped the lesson for next week. Have February 14th and February 28th as the last two lessons. And um, the outline does show that we're to have a lesson next week called Living in His Will, Love, Serve, and Speak. And that's from 1 Peter uh, 4, 6 through 11. So in order to do that, uh, we need to look at this lesson today, even if we spend some time with it next week as well. The name of the lesson is called Walk in the Spirit. It's from Galatians chapter uh, 5, verses 16 through 26, although only half the questions deal with that. So uh, let's start there. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. We've read this passage a few times uh, on other topics and certainly have been preaching on it some. But with this in mind, there are some specific questions that can be answered using this text that have to do with living in the Spirit, as our lesson title, uh, lesson theme, talks about. So let's just look at the passage, verse 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you just as I have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us then also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. So as you can see, the, the theme of this entire study, Living in the Spirit, comes from these verses, the last part of chapter 5 of Galatians. But at the beginning, there are some particular things that are explained. And question one reads, how do we keep from carrying out the desires of the flesh? This is addressed twice in this passage. In verse 16, very plainly, Paul says, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. That seems pretty simple. But then he goes on to say in verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So that walk involves a somewhat permanent ending of just doing whatever you please, which is addressed here as well. We can do what we please or we can walk by the Spirit, that is, do what the Spirit pleases. And so the walk is our part of the being led by the Spirit. The Spirit leads, we walk. Have you ever tried to take someone on a journey they didn't want to go on? Um, this week I did that, as a matter of fact. Uh, you can try all you want to, but if they don't cooperate, they're not coming. And that's what is being described here. The Spirit will lead us if we will walk. And if we engage that walk and follow the Spirit's lead, then we're going to have a whole lot better time not carrying out the desires of the flesh because we're in relationship with the Spirit. So verse 17 answers question two, so why is it so hard to do that? Why is it so hard to walk by the Spirit? Well, 17 is the verse that describes the fact that the Spirit and the flesh are in opposition to each other. 
just like we sometimes resist the Spirit's will and refuse to walk where the Spirit leads, uh, in any person, flesh and spirit are, are going to butt heads. They're, they're going to fail to cooperate. There's going to be rebellion. There are going to be times when you sit down like a little two-year-old and say, I don't want to. It's hard to do that because this is going to be a constant war. We're talking about that on Wednesday night in our uh, series on spiritual warfare and describing a lot of those uh, situations. But, but clearly, Paul says, I, I have to address this. I have to say this as part of this encouragement to walk by the Spirit. This is not going to be easy, and, and you're going to struggle with this. And it, so if you're feeling that struggle, I would say that's the way you're designed, but it isn't. <laughs> We're designed to live like the Spirit would have us live, but we have a will of our own that many times resists anything God wants. Now I asked question three about the deeds of the flesh and I asked you for two categories of the desires of the flesh. Um, we were talking about this I think last week in the lesson and uh, there, there's a little bit of variance on, on what you count or how you look at it. But I think in this question what, what I was seeing as I read through this is there's basically an inward and outward category. The things that, uh, that are inward to us like immorality, impurity, and sensuality, uh, things that where, where we're doing what we want to do and we're just following our fleshly desires, that's, that's one kind of sin. But like most sin, there's an outward component and there's a sense in which it affects other people. And so you begin to see uh, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger. Uh, I, I can do all those things by myself, but you know they're, they're much more destructive if I'll just do them with someone else around. And so there seems, in, in my view, just, just quickly looking over this passage to be an inward and outward component of this walk by the Spirit. The Spirit wants to remake us from the inside, and I'll talk about that in our sermon this morning. We want to remain the way we are, and, and that's a problem. And so we have to uh, decide who we're going to serve, who we're going to follow, and decide if we're going to walk or sit. And uh, God is clearly more pleased with the walking part. All right, three Old Testament passage, uh, passages. Isaiah 30 is the first. Um, Isaiah 30, verse 1. And you know, you're reading along in Isaiah, which again will be part of our, our sermon this morning. Isaiah is dealing with the children of Israel as they're uh, rebelling against God and not doing what God wants. And so uh, things that we do that are against God are going to be addressed in the things that he addresses uh, with them. So in Isaiah 30, verse 1, it reads, Woe to the rebellious children, declares the Lord, who execute a plan but not mine and make an alliance, but not of my spirit, in order to add sin to sin. So what we know about their history in this point in time is that Israel was fearing a danger from the north and they decided they would go south and, and appeal to Egypt, as the verses go on to say, uh, who proceed down to Egypt without consulting me to take refuge in the safety of Pharaoh and seek shelter in the shadow of Egypt. And God says, it's not going to work out for you. This is not going to be good. You're going to, you're going to go to Egypt, and, and in effect, you're going to proclaim Egypt as your protector, which makes Egypt your God, because I'm your protector. I'm your God. And uh, my plan is to take care of you and to have you follow me. So when we don't follow God, we devise our own plans, and we carry out things that are not his plan, execute them, he says, and these are not of His Spirit. So it's the Spirit's lead, even in the Old Testament, God described it that way. It's the Spirit's lead that helps us walk in the path that God has designed. God makes known His will. He wants us to do as He has asked, and He makes that possible because His Spirit dwells within us. The people of Israel weren't bending to that. He calls that rebellion. 
and he even uses the phrase adding sin to sin. So I don't know, is it the rebellion that causes the second sin of executing a plan that's not from God? Is that what he's talking about? Or is he talking about their way of life? You know, your whole way of life is a way of rebellion. It, and it's going to lead you naturally to do things that are against me. And that's adding sin to sin. It's like two offenses. We commit an offense, we ask for forgiveness, and then we go back and commit the offense again. And it causes the person who forgives to wonder, did you really mean that? Or, you know, why did you do it again? That makes me doubt whether, whether you were really sorry uh, the previous time when you were forgiven. Of course, we're supposed to forgive anyway. That's the way God does it, and that's the way He insists we do it. But it's possible to add sin to sin, and especially as we try to walk in the Spirit or by the Spirit and find ourselves back carrying out the desire of the flesh again. The second passage is Psalm 32, and I'm, I'm starting in verse 2, which is um, obviously in the middle of a thought. A lot of people know verse 1, how blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's a very popular memory verse. But the, but the psalmist goes on to talk about that process and add some insight to it that I wanted us to focus on in this lesson. Question is, what did David say was one characteristic of someone who is blessed by God? Obviously, the blessing is the blessing of forgiveness in this context. But verse 2 says, How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Now, we've talked about Satan, particularly on Wednesday night, being the deceiver. He ensnares, as we talked this last Wednesday night. He likes to trap us. He likes to make us think that this is our only option or this is our best option. And in reality, God's way is much better uh, as an option for us. If there's no deceit in my spirit, I'm not trying to fool myself, I'm not trying to fool my neighbor, and I'm certainly not trying to fool God. And so that will bring a blessing from God. Now notice there are actually three blessings mentioned here, and they're all related. But between verse 1 and verse 2, we have our transgressions forgiven, we have our sin covered, and iniquity is not imputed. Now that simply means the iniquity may occur, but it's not going to be written down as an iniquity because the sin is covered, because the transgression is forgiven. It's kind of God's way of, of describing, uh, using different uh, figures of speech, what forgiveness is really about and what it really looks like. So forgiveness doesn't mean we didn't commit the sin. It doesn't mean God forgets the sin. It means that he doesn't record it as being against us. Our iniquity is not imputed. On the other hand, Abraham uh, believed God and it was imputed or reckoned as righteousness to him. The New Testament says about uh, the Old Testament figure Abraham. No deceit. When we are deceitful, we're acting like Satan. That's his trick. That's his tool. And that is not a walk in the Spirit. And so anywhere you see deceit entering your life, it, it's, it's something that needs to be moved away. It's something that needs to be stamped out. It, it's something that will prevent us from walking effectively by the Spirit. We won't be able to follow the Spirit's lead if deceit is found in us. And that deceit is resident, David says, in our spirit, which tells us that's one of those inward problems that we need to take care of. All right, the last text is Proverbs 15, 4, going to the writings of Solomon. Um, you know, in the wise man, just these little phrases that, that talk about life and, you know, good life and better life uh, and, a, and a fool and how a fool acts. Um, here's a, a tidbit from uh, Proverbs 15, verse 4. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, 
but perversion in it crushes the spirit. Obviously, crushing the spirit is is uh, what brought me to this passage. The New Testament talks about quenching the spirit, putting out the spirit's fire in First Thessalonians. Um, Solomon described it as crushing the spirit, and I think in this case he's not talking about the Holy Spirit as much as he's talking about other people. There's a popular Christian artist named Toby Mac that, that has a, a theme a phrase called speak life. And I believe it's from this passage. We no longer speak life. We no longer are a tree of life when our tongue ceases to be soothing. And we're able then to crush another person's spirit with a tongue that is not soothing. James describes the tongue as, as a forest fire, as, a, as the seed of, of immense destruction. And we've all experienced that. We know what it's like to have our spirit crushed by someone else's mouth, someone else's tongue, someone who's not being soothing. But as God always does, uh, He tells us through Solomon's wisdom, it, it's not just the avoidance of bad things, it's the presence of a soothing tongue. That we, that we should want, that we should uh, long for, and that we should try to exhibit for other people. And that's that walk in the Spirit. When we are walking in the Spirit, we are being helpful. We are speaking life. We are being a soothing presence in conversations where things might be rough or strained or tense. I want to go back and, and uh, look at the... Uh, description of this lesson. We walk and are led by His Spirit to overcome sin and produce fruit. And I want you to see in these things that we've talked about here how, how all of this goes together. As I've already mentioned, the Spirit leads us, and if we walk, then we're in cooperation with the Spirit instead of opposition against the Spirit, though the natural tendency of the human being is to oppose the Spirit. But the other side of that is also important. Two results of walking in the Spirit are overcoming sin and producing fruit. And so if we're going to be people of the Spirit and love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control are the things that come out of our life, the fruit that, that is born, the tree of life, as Solomon called it in uh, Proverbs 15, 4, then, then we're able to be the positive impact on the world as God created it because we are His people led by His Spirit. And in order to do that, we have to stamp out sin in our life and get rid of the selfishness, the inward tendencies to oppose the Spirit, and the outward manifestations that create havoc in the relationships around us. This is this is what our manner of life is all about, being inward and outwardly uh, humble and willing to follow the lead of God's Spirit so that sin is not a part of our lives and fruit of the Spirit is what is produced and evident in those around us. All right, next week, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as we hopefully return to regular schedules and, and locations. February 21st, we'll be living in His will, love, serve, and speak from 1 Peter 4, 6 through 11. And I'll try to get that lesson's questions in the mail to you this week. Uh, if you tuned in late, just uh, go back and listen to it again. It's just uh, about 20 minutes long. So that's our lesson, and in 30 minutes, we'll... Uh, have a worship time, and uh, I'll share with you some thoughts from the sermon. Let's pray together. Father, it is, it is our privilege to be in your presence, to be your people, to be loved by you, and, and to be led by you. And Father, as we live our lives, we pray that we could do so in such a way that, that sin is less an influence in our lives, and that Satan is overcome because your spirit is what is evident in our life and is what leading is what is leading our life. 
Father, help us to bear that fruit that the Spirit produces as we walk in Him and find the, the love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control to be an ever-present reality. And Father, whatever it takes to become your children exhibiting these things, we pray that we would be willing to take that walk and to do that work and to receive from your hand. Bless us today, Father, as it's so cold and with so many who are, are struggling and ailing. Just continue your presence with us. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Thanks for being a part of this lesson.